Hello everyone, welcome to Automation and BeamNG Drive. My name is Tim, and today we're going to be building a K car. And if you don't know what a K car is, it's basically a, a Japanese micro car. A K car cannot have an engine that exceeds 660 cubic centimeters or 63 horsepower, and it cannot be beyond a certain dimensions. Here are the dimensions that the car cannot exceed. And anyway, Here's our car that I chose right here. It does meet all of them, and yeah, we're gonna give it all the super light materials and the best suspension. And for an engine, I think that we, yeah, I'm just gonna put in a normal engine in there just so I can get the other things done because this thing's gonna need a brand new engine because none of my engines are even compatible with a K car. And I want this thing to make as much horsepower as possible and within the regulations, because I want this thing to go fast. I don't want this thing to be a slow little commuter. I want this thing to be a K-car sports car. My Ideally, I want it to be able to do a 15 second quarter mile or something within that range, maybe a little above or something, but this is a K-car. It's probably not going to be able to do that quickly at all. So... Let's just go through the vehicle itself. Yeah, it's looking good. I think just this vehicle is pretty nice, if I say so myself. I might potentially change the body. I'm not sure. But yeah, for this thing, we're going to give it the lightest things in order to make sure it's actually good. We're going to give it some premiums as well. We're going to put the rear weight focus to the back because the engine's in the front. Well, a 50-50 weight distribution, and yeah, nobody is buying this, probably because the engine we chose has 966 horsepower, which is way above the K-car regulations. In fact, that is exactly 903 horsepower more than the K-car regulations. So, we're gonna have to figure some stuff out. The car itself is decent, other than its fuel economy, which is absolutely atrocious. But now, let's make the new engine. K, and then silly. Okay, we have that, and yeah, I'm changing the car model. That's what I'm going to be doing, changing it to this 80s coupe. I wanted to do a V8, but then I thought about doing a V12, which, believe it or not, yes, you can make a V12 that is less than 660 cubic centimeters in this game, but I decided, nah, I want a V8, a pushrod V8, because this thing... I want it to have, like, a little muscle car engine and all that. And also, this thing is going to have, like, tubular race headers, so it's a classic vehicle of mine. And yeah, actually tuning the engine was very difficult because I've never made an engine like this. I've never made an engine with so many cylinders, but yet with so little power. We're going to put a single turbo on it, or a twin turbo, haven't decided yet, but... These turbos are both about the size of the actual engine itself, which is ridiculous. And also, this thing is making way more than... Okay, that I just saw 151 horsepower. That is way too much. We need to get it down to 63, not 63.1, just 63 flat. That is the most horsepower we are allowed to make. Any more, and our car is going to be banned. And it cannot be a K car, which, from what I know, I believe a K car is like that size and that level of engine because it's like a special low tax vehicle or something like that. And yeah, we got our engine down to, uh, we're getting it down to about this, that amount of power. And now we got it. Okay, I'm just examining this body, seeing if I want to do any modding to it, like any like shaping to it. I probably will, but yeah, that's the engine right there. That's all of its figures. And now we are going to color it. I colored it orange and gave it black carbon fiber for its wheels. The carbon fiber with no um, coating on it. And I'm just trying to find a good wheel that kind of suits this thing. Sporty, but not like ridiculously sporty. Okay, those, no, no. Yeah, those right there. I actually really like those wheels. They're the same wheels on the Tuo Muso, which is a vehicle I made, like, almost a year ago or something like that. I might have made it, like, six months ago. I'm not entirely sure. 
I did make it a pretty long time ago, but yeah. Now we're gonna put rear lights on the car and a license plate, but we're not gonna make it centered because I don't think a lot of cars in Japan actually have centered license plates. We're giving it suicide doors. We're obviously giving it mirrors. Yeah, we're gonna put them on the actual fenders themselves because, yeah, Japan has a decent amount of cars with fender mirrors. Pop-up headlights, of course. What would this thing be without pop-up headlights? Garbage. That's what it would be. We need pop-up headlights because we want this thing to be a JDM classic, and... Now we're gonna put a Japanese license plate on the front as well. Okay, having it tilt like that is not good. Okay, these ones conform to the body shape, which is nice. So yeah, we're gonna put a big happy grill on this thing because, after all, it does have a V8 inside of it. So that V8 needs tons of air. We're gonna put our little badge on the front, right next to our license plate, which... This car is just happy looking. We'll get these little turn signals on here that probably cost like three bucks. And now I want to put a diffuser on this thing. Not like a ridiculous diffuser, but I want to put one that like shows that this thing is decently fast, especially for a K car. Okay, yeah, that is probably a bit too aggressive. Let's see how the exhausts work and no, that window cutout does not work there. Okay, the exhausts themselves, okay, these two double square exhausts are nice, but I don't really like them that much. And yeah, now that I think about it, I am probably going to just have to change the diffuser so that it has exhaust cutouts built into it. Yeah, that one right there. Exhaust cutouts, and it even has like the little fins back there. Okay, and just change it, choosing a shape. Yes, I would like fix cylinders on this thing. That is what I personally want for it. And yeah, we're gonna adjust the door handle. We're gonna pick a wing for this thing because clearly it needs a wing. After all, this is a rear-wheel drive micro car, basically. And yeah, we're gonna put a little tow hitch for, like, if you have, like, a tiny wagon with, like, a bicycle on it. Yeah, just put it there. Oh yeah, and this thing has decently pretty wide tires at the rear. Like, I think the tires on this thing are, like, 215s, which are only about 20 millimeters narrower than my car's tires. Which is pretty crazy for a car like this. We'll give a little engine exit vent right here in order to basically let the hot air dissipate because, well, it's told because that engine with its furious 63 horsepower definitely needs all this vents on it. Yeah, we're going to give them a little sunroof and all that. And we're going to put a tiny bit of front arrow so this thing has better handling and can actually produce a little bit of downforce. And... Yeah, we're putting the Sklava name, but as for the actual vehicle's name, I'm thinking of K66GT or something like that. Now, I put K66 instead of 63 is because it is the engine's displacement in cubic centimeters divided by 10, and K because, well, this is a K car, GT, this is a sports car, because, yeah, just why not? And also, I worked on the interior off-camera because it was absolutely stressful, and I think I spent like two hours on it. Yeah, I like to just think about what I want to do for an interior. I don't exactly do my interiors well, but I don't exactly do them bad. My interiors, I don't, I don't like recording my interior making because I feel like there's way too many camera angles and it takes way too long to do them. So yeah, my interiors, get them off-camera. Now, let's go to BMG Drive! Right here is the Torque Master 7600, which, as the name implies, makes 7600 newton meters of torque. Yeah, that car... Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna crash the Torque Master first, and then I'll tell you. So yeah, that Torque Master, this car we're driving is as long as that thing's front cab and engine, not the bed. And this thing could probably fit in its wheelbase. We're gonna do a long lap around the Hirochi circuit, and the sound is just corrupted. I think there's just too many sound inputs for this thing. And yeah, we're inside the car, and I'm gonna say something. It does not go fast, but 
what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in handling. Like, I don't even think I could spin this thing out if I wanted to. You know that? Like, that is something cool about this thing. Handles pretty well. It's actually a lot faster than I expected. And currently we are in second place right now. Oh no, we're definitely gonna go in fourth now. That is gonna be incredibly sad and disappointing. But, we're at... Okay, we're climbing at speed, that's wonderful. Third gear. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. The blue car crashed into the wall, so... We're going to be permanently in third, it seems. Yeah, we're gonna be permanently ahead of them, it looks like, and... Yeah, this thing... I wish you guys could drive it, because this thing genuinely does handle well. Like, this thing is a phenomenal track car, no matter how slow it is. It is stupidly slow and is just kind of miserable, to be honest, if you're trying to do quick, fast driving, like driving it like a race car. But I will say this, it does do 0-60 to 60 in 8 seconds, according to automation. and. I, I just cannot get over just how fun this thing is to drive. It's slow, but it handles so well, and it reminds me of, like, a tiny little sports car, because, well, that's what it is, a tiny little sports car. And we're crossing this bridge, we went a little over 80, I believe, and yeah, in the sand, this thing does not handle well, I probably should have made an all-wheel drive version of this thing, but rear-wheel drive is pretty cool for this. And right now, and we're not even in sport mode right now. We are in the normal, regular street mode. And uh, to be honest, I don't think I am going to turn on sport mode in this entire video at all. Because this thing is just, it's fun in its normal mode. And why it doesn't even need a sport mode? I don't really think it does. I think it's plenty fast enough for what it is. After all, this thing is only like 11 feet long, which is just 2 feet longer than the Scalavra B8, which I made a few video- which I featured a few videos back. That thing is 282 horsepower, and is capable of pulling a wheelie. I don't think this thing needs to go that fast, because the B8 is kinda unstable. This thing right here, probably my most stable vehicle I've ever made, other than, like, maybe a few others. Thing is, it's more stable than the Turbine Thrasher, because that thing is utterly ridiculous. But, I would say, it is not as stable as a few of my other slow cars. In particular, I'm not sure if it's as stable as, well, the Uno Muso which doesn't have traction control, only has 103 horsepower, and also is from 1946, and cannot go 130 miles per hour. It has a top speed of 128. I don't know what this thing's top speed is, but I'm gonna take a guess it's like in the 130s or something like that. And, okay, I think I see a car in the distance. That might be the blue car. Oh, it is the blue car! We're gonna go around them! Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that they lost to a car which um, should not be racing with cars like this. This thing is n in the wrong racing class right here. Just wrong, wrong, wrong. This thing should not be racing with these other vehicles. But, it does handle phenomenally. And it t earns quickly, it probably has a very small turn radius, which is nice. And we're gonna be done soon. Let's go as fast as we can. Okay, let's see, 70, can we get 70? Yes, we can! 72. And now, let's see what we got. Oh, we finished this in a little under five minutes. Not that bad. And we got a bronze medal. That is actually lovely. Now, I'm gonna exit this challenge and test this thing's off-road capabilities. Now, we're at the off-road section of this map, and this thing's probably gonna suck off-road. Like, the Uno Muso was rear-wheel drive, and that thing was actually surprisingly good off-road. As, as low to the ground as it was, that thing was kinda good. 
oh uh, yeah, this thing is definitely not doing good. Even if nearly redlining it, this thing will not get traction. And just, it's kind of sad now that I think about it. This is just... Why? Okay. It definitely has a differential at the back. It's not like one of... I, I don't even know if it has a differential at the back at this point. Just, this thing can only go slow when off-road. It can drive in sand, surprisingly, and on, well, gravel, but not up hills. It can only fly on flat sand and flat gravel. And not fly, drive. And, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna floor, the, I'm gonna redline this thing, see if that gives it enough catapulting to go up the hill. Because I, I need this thing to go up. Okay, let's see. Will that, will this be enough to bring it up the hill? No, it's not. And I think this thing makes like 53 pound-feet of torque or something like that. But I will say it, it is decently quick and zippy for what it is. It's a lovely, cute little vehicle. It's happy and smiley, even if it's stuck in the dirt. But, now that I think about it, this thing, we're probably going to need to call someone to rescue it. We're definitely going to need to call someone to rescue it. I can't even get up that hill, it looks like. Okay, can we get up and, uh, no, we cannot. We cannot get up that hill, so I brought the Torque Master here. And if it's a little laggy or the sound is bugged out, I, I don't know why, but... Yeah, the Torque Master has plenty of torque, and also plenty of power to get this thing out. And, okay, we're not gonna crash into it. Okay, yeah, that should give you an idea of just how easily the Torque Master can break vehicles. After all, this thing weighs like 7,500 pounds, which is about as much as a Rivian R1T. And also... I believe the Torque Master makes something like 5,000 horsepower or something like that. Which is more than the Turbine Thrasher by like, at l almost 2,000 more. But yeah, I'm gonna move my little car to get it into position to be pushed out. And now, let's take the Torque Master up this hill with our little slideshow, our choppy slideshow that is weird. Okay, we're gonna take it down the hill. Make sure it's all lined up properly. And now, I think that we should go. Okay, let's go. This thing is not even struggling to push itself, like, to pull itself or push the little K66. It's not struggling at all. And, okay, let's see. Can we get it pushed a little farther? And uh, we pushed it too far. It's now in the woods. Can we get it out? Okay, I hope we can get it out. Yes, we can. It's better on grass than on sand, dirt, whatever this road's may have, but... Okay, considering that we're not that fast, we gotta check both ways. Oh, there's no traffic, so let's go. Yeah, this thing right here, I feel like if it did exist and it were in the United States, it would actually be kind of a good commuter car. It's not that fast, and it's not super slow. But, the thing about it, I feel like it would be pretty fuel efficient. After all, it has a tiny engine that's turbocharged, and also, the thing is, I'm fairly certain if it were in the United States, it would be offered with more than just a 5-speed manual, which is what it has, but yeah. These roads right here, yeah, I saw some, like, seats to, like, watch the racing event, which is pretty neat. And let's see, can we reach a certain point here? Okay, this thing does handle well on, like, the back roads, which is pretty lovely. And at some point, we're gonna take this thing to the drag strip, because it needs to go there in order to actually do a good job. So we can prove if it's worthy of being imported to the United States. Here's the Turbine Thrasher versus the K66 GT. Okay, I can barely hear my car. Oh yeah. The Turbine Thrasher is... Okay, at this point it is literally done with its drag race. 
because that thing is utterly insane. It's a sub seven second quarter mile machine. This thing right here can't even do 88. Can't even do 88 miles per hour, so it fails as a DeLorean. Well, probably on a one kilometer strip, it would not fail as a DeLorean, but still, this thing fails as a DeLorean. Can't even go 88 on a quarter mile. Yeah, we definitely failed. Our opponent did so much better. They went almost 250 for their trap speed. Now, we have the legendary Uno Muso with us. These two vehicles are about the same size and have a relatively similar horsepower figure. And the Uno Muso has a four speed manual. This has a five speed, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, they're about in the same weight class as well. And we are losing, which is actually genuinely embarrassing, because something from 1946 just beat us in a drag race. That is genuinely sad. And now, let's go and race against a car I made a while back. A cycle car. The Trash Bucket. And let's see, where are we going to go now? Okay, the Trash Bucket only has like 34 horsepower from a dinky little inline three. But for it... It's not actually super slow. The trash bucket is actually surprisingly fast for what it is. Because the thing is, despite only having 34 horsepower, it can reach 60 miles per hour. I think its top speed's like 80 though, which is okay. And 22 seconds for them. Not too bad. And now I have another drag race that we're gonna do. We're going to do it against this electric buggy I made about a year ago. This electric buggy right here is probably not going to have as fast of a start as us, but might catch up with us later. So, let's get ready. Okay, they're finally on the line. And go! Okay, right now, we're definitely beating them, but... Okay, I hope they do not catch up with us. Okay, I think we're doing good so far, and... Okay, can we go? Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Yes! Yes, we beat them. We absolutely beat them. And then that makes me happy. You know that? That makes me super happy that we just beat them. Because they're a silly little EV buggy. They're, they make a better DeLorean than us. That's bad news. So, we are currently doing the speed test now. Why am I doing the speed test? Well, I'm doing the speed test because I want to know what this thing's top speed is. We managed to do a tiny little burnout there, burn some rubber onto the pavement. And, let's see, when are we going to reach 60? We're going to reach it now! We just reached 60. And we're going to be at 70 pretty soon. And I want to see this thing reach 100 because... This thing definitely needs some time to reach that speed. Okay, let's see, when are we gonna reach it? When are we gonna reach it? Yes, 101, 102, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This thing is climbing in speed. And just remember, this thing, 63 horsepower and 660 cc's. But it is from a turbocharged V8 that does follow those regulations. So, I think we're doing pretty good. 125, 26, okay, can we reach 27, 28, okay, 29, we are officially faster than the Uno Muso. 130, 131, 132, okay, can we get 133? Yes, we can, okay. I, I remember this part. We are going to need to do a tiny turn, so we're going to probably be lower in speed now. Okay, we're back down to 131, but that is still pretty fast for a tiny little underpowered car like this. I can do, okay, 134. We're doing wonderful. 135. We're, can we make it to 140? I'm going to take a bet of maybe... Just maybe. And let's see, 136. 
Okay, we're almost out of track, but I'm fairly certain this thing's almost out of speed. And 137! We did 137 and got into a fatal car crash. But we're safe on the inside, that's the good thing. This thing is pretty unharmed. And you know what, I'm gonna do the same test the other way. Because in order to get a, an actual speed record from like the Guinness World Records, you need to do a two-way flying run. And when I mean flying run, I mean just going as fast as you can in a straight line. That's what flying means in that context. And so far, this thing, I'm genuinely impressed with it. It has not let me down. It has not disappointed me. This thing is genuinely wonderful. And another thing about it, I think it's a quite nice and cute looking car. And if it existed, I'd actually might consider buying it. In fact, most of these cars that I've made in my automation Beam and G Drive series, I would actually consider on buying. You know why? Because I designed them the way I want them to be designed. And, okay, this thing, I think it is almost certainly the world's fastest K car. I'm not sure what the record is, but if I find it out, I will tell you what it is. Okay, this thing is it's doing really well in a straight line, but a tiny little minor turn will make you lose speed. And we're almost at the end of the road, I believe. I'm not sure. We probably have another bridge to cross under. Yes, we do. And this is one of my... Oh, we just did a sign. Luckily, that wasn't a physical sign, but yeah. This right here is my favorite map for because it is like 20 or 30 kilometers of road it's straight there's grass it's lovely and you know what else you can do you can drive into the water yes we're gonna do that ourselves after all if we break tradition my channel will probably lose all of its subscribers if i break tradition by not ending a video by driving into the ocean anyway that's all